guys, how's it going? So today we're out in the cut flower garden and I'm getting ready to plant a big bunch of peppers. I get questions a lot about why we call it the cut flower garden when I plant so many edibles out here and maybe we should change the name. Maybe it should be the big garden because we do have two. This is the bigger one of the two. We've got the other one with all the raised beds. Um, we could call it the giving garden since what our goal is out here is to just grow stuff that we're interested in growing and to use what we need and then give away everything else. I don't know. Either way, I just kind of grow all the things out here and it's a ton of fun. So I've got both sweet and uh, spicy peppers to plant today. I've started some of them from seed myself and some of them I have purchased. So let me get them all out of the box and categorized here. We've got three red bells to start things off that are looking great starting to flower. Orange bells, green bells, yellow bells, gypsy which are a sweet, sweet banana, barracuda which have a low heat level. They're like a poblano. And then next up we have the Rayano peppers, which are kind of mild too. I don't think, I don't know what it says here, mildly hot. Then we've got our spicy ones. I've just got straight up jalapenos and super chilies. That's a lot of peppers right there. So last year when I planted the peppers out in the cut flower garden space, we had really good luck with them. They did really well. Um, I think that they were like the thickest walled, most beautiful peppers I have ever grown. So I'm very hopeful that since we're kind of in the same space that we have the same luck, um, but there are a few things that you can do to kind of ensure that you have the best tasting peppers and ones with nice thick walls. First off, you want to plant your peppers in a spot that gets full sun. I'm talking six to eight hours minimum. The more sun, the better. And I think that was in our favor last year when we plant out here there's nothing around to shade them so they get sun all day from sun up till sundown and that makes for a very happy pepper plant they are warm season plants so you need to make sure to put them out after the last frost like well after it um, and I think we're past that now here toward the end of May. It's still fairly cool, like I'm in a sweatshirt in the mornings, uh, but it's starting to warm up. And these are definitely plants that like a hot season that's long. You also wanna put your peppers somewhere that has well-draining soil, somewhere that the soil's decent. Um, out here, I'm gonna be working in a good starter fertilizer. So I've got the Biotone and some compost. So you can see the starter fertilizer there. I'll be working in some compost just into the planting sites, like the holes I'm gonna be putting these in. They tend to like a pH of like neutral to slightly acidic fairly tolerant of low alkalinity but we're pretty high pH here so I think by working on the soil a little bit and adding some good um, organic matter in it's gonna make for a happier plant it sure did for us last year these are the exact things I added into the planting area where I put them last year and they did great and then when the peppers are blooming and starting to really put on like their fruit set then I'll come along with the garden tone right there and just side dress the plant. So typically they get their kind of initial fertilizer compost boost and then I fertilize one more time. You could probably do it more consistently than that, but I found that that's pretty good. So this is where I'm gonna be planting them this year. You can see my rows of cabbage. They are looking just fantastic. Nothing's put on a tremendous amount of growth. I mean, actually this is kind of tremendous. <laughs> You might remember what these look like when I planted them, just tiny little things. And they're starting to stool out, they're starting to kind of form in the center. They're looking absolutely gorgeous. And so let me pop over here, a little tour here. Brussels sprouts have put on quite a bit of growth. I haven't had to stake them yet, but you can see if we get close here, they are starting to form as well. I've got a ton of onions. This is just one of my onion planting sites here. I've got close to a thousand onions out here. That was kind of a mistake on my part. The initial crop of onions I planted out here, I thought died after we had like the most horrific windstorm ever. All the tops died off. And I went and bought new onions. And when I came out to plant them, I started digging around around the old ones. And I noticed that there was a little bit of green growth coming out. And so they're all looking really good. Let me show you actually. Yeah. So this is what has become of all my first crop of onions. They're all looking really good. These are the ones I started from seed uh, way early on. And so I'm really thrilled that they're doing so great. Potatoes are looking excellent. Got some flowers blooming, those are stock right there. And then this row of flowers that I seeded really early is coming up and there are a few coming up in that first row. Remember that huge windstorm right after I planted? I thought they were all gone. I'm gonna have to replant this section right here though, which isn't a big deal. And this space is filling up. The first two rows have snapdragon seedlings, uh, syrinth, there's mahogany splendor right here. They're all really small, so they're hard to see. 288 dahlias are in right there. And then this row has gladiolus right there. So it's gonna be good, you guys. And then the poor sweet peas, they are starting to put on growth. We still may get some flowers yet out of those. And the artichokes look like they are starting to root 
and they're starting to put on a little bit more growth as well. We just need some heat. Anyway, I'm gonna be planting all my peppers right along this row right here. Uh, I can plant on every side of this drip tape. So this is the drip tape that has the emitter holes every six inches. So here, there, and so forth. You can kind of see the little emitter sites there. So it really saturates the area on either side and in the middle. Peppers want to be spaced roughly 18 to 24 inches apart. So I can kind of do like my first row and then um, go in between, like kind of a zigzag style. Anyway. We'll see how it goes here. I am gonna be placing some stakes near each one of these plants too because peppers tend to have brittle stems and when they get full of fruit and if we get any whiff of a breeze out here, those two things are kind of bad and they can make the um, branches crack right off the plant. So I'm planning on staking mine this year. Last year I didn't do that. I didn't have too much problem, um, thankfully, because they were a little bit protected where I had them planted, but I don't want it to be a problem this year. I want them to be happy the whole time and I want to get a lot of peppers. I actually have a few more peppers like the hot and heavies. I have those still in the studio. They're a little small and um, they're a little bit smaller than these are and so I'm going to wait a little bit uh, until I put them out because we are supposed to have some thunderstorms actually tonight and a little bit of rain tomorrow which is a little atypical but I think it's a great day to get these planted when it's overcast. All right so let's just get all of these in the ground. It. I need 12 more steaks. Back to the barn. Oh, I'm sad to report that that boxwood did not make it. Sad. At least it wasn't that one. That kind of caps the design. So still a bummer. We tried. Good thing Aaron and I organized all these things earlier on this season. This might be too wimpy. Hmm. These will work. They're kind of long, but I can cut them down in size. Oh, you know what, you guys, while we're here, I forgot to show these in the last garden tour. Look at the Zephyrine roses. <gasps> Isn't that the most gorgeous thing ever? Look at all those blooms. Do you remember what this plant looked like when I was done with it? It looked like nothing. I do have some bushy growth already. You can see that that prune gave it a huge recharge. Uh, but there are buds. I'll let them bloom and then I'll cut them back. Let's take a look at the others. That one right there. This one gets a little bit more shade, but it's doing great. Uh-oh. Well, that's not good. Hold on. My word, that drip tube just came apart and it was just flowing all over the place. There's that zephyrine right there. The bushy growth is kind of shrouding all the buds and stuff, but there are a ton of buds. They're just now starting to bloom. Um, I need to cut all of this bushy stuff right in front off because I think there's a difference. There's some bushy stuff that's zephyrine and some bushy stuff that's from the rootstock, which I don't want to keep. Same with this one right here. I see buds all over. But I think this stuff right here is coming up from the rootstock. It has a different look to it. And when I say sprouting from the rootstock, what I mean is that some roses, like this one in particular, is grafted onto a different type of rose's rootstock that's tougher, hardier, um, and so forth. Sometimes roses will sprout from underneath their graft and it'll be the parent rootstock. So I think in this case it's Dr. Huey, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a single red rose. Um, some people when that starts to happen they'll dig out their rose altogether and start over. And some people like myself on some roses will just cut off that rootstock growth and let the other rose continue to grow. So anyway, uh, it happens on occasion. Isn't that funny? You can definitely tell which roses get the most amount of sun. 
And if we look through the chicken coop wires, you can kind of see more blooms. This side actually gets more sun on like in the interior of the coop than it does on the outside. Just loving it. Are you loving it, Bev? I'm loving it. I think we should take a look at the Colette really quick and then we'll head back out to the task at hand. I get distracted so easy, especially this time of year. Look at that Colette climbing rose. Is that not the most gorgeous thing ever? And I love, we just started training these. Of course, the sun's gonna come out super bright, but we just started training some of the branches over because I would like them to kind of cover the fence and it's kind of perfect because the rose, I mean, it doesn't just want to grow on an arbor. It creates a lot of lateral growth. And so if we can train some of it over and enjoy it on the fence too, like how awesome is that? One of my favorite climbers right here and it has more thorns than, oh, it's just a very <laughs> thorn filled rose. So keep that in mind if you want to grow it, but you get some gorgeous flowers from it. And our hard prune did a great job. Oh, see, we could pop this one up there if I was tall enough. Just a little pop up there. We gotta take those garden winds when we can get them. Beautiful. Planted, staked, and watered in. Now I didn't actually stake the pepper plants yet, but I put everything in place. So we have the stake here right next to the pepper plant. And then this is like a foam covered wire tie. And I just put one around each one of the stakes. Um, so as the pepper plant grows, I don't have to go searching for any of my staking equipment. It's just all right here. And I can just take this and wrap it around the, the uh, main branch of the pepper plant and lash it to my stake right here. And even though I have a drip system in place, I do like to hand water them in at least the first time. That way I can make sure all the soil has settled in nicely around the root balls because on occasion there'll be like an air pocket or something somewhere and the soil settles and exposes some of the root ball which can make the plant stressed so I just like to make sure they're all nicely tucked in and you can see that I did put a little bit of compost around the base of each plant that'll help uh, maintain some of the moisture although when you have a drip system in place that's consistent that consistently comes on I, I don't have to worry about these plants drying out that's not as important um, so just keep that in mind that you can mulch around the plants and that will 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 help with moisture loss and help the soil retain more moisture which is really imperative with these plants and I see most pepper guides tell you to keep your peppers consistently moist and give them one to two inches of water a week I don't even know what the heck that means <laughs> how do you gauge that especially if you're using a drip system uh, if you're watering by hand that's really hard to measure and if you're getting rain you have to keep that in mind too because if you're getting lots of rain then you need to back off on the amount of water you're giving them either manually or by a drip system the most important thing is just to make sure that you give them consistent moisture and you don't let them dry completely out if if you do that it can cause a whole slew of different problems and it can make the peppers um, either taste bitter and it can create thin walled peppers which I think is one of the number one complaints I see when growing bell peppers people say well I went to all this work and then I harvested these really thin flimsy peppers and they didn't taste very good um, and that could be a couple different things but water is the biggest one if they're not watered consistently they most likely will have thin walls if they are watered consistently I mean that plant will have enough water to to feed the um, whole fruit. I mean, because you guys know how much moisture are in the walls of those peppers, it takes a lot to create that. Another couple of reasons why you may have thin walled peppers is that you might be harvesting immature fruit. It may be that you are a little impatient and you want to get out there and get those peppers cut, but when they initially form, those walls are thinner. They don't just come out thick. It takes a while to produce that. And the other thing is not enough feed. So if you have poor soil or you're not feeding your plant enough, um, it can also create that and um, like I said I find that putting compost starter fertilizer in when I plant and then side dressing them once maybe twice in the season with garden tone or something similar uh, is a really good way to get a 
a good pepper. Another couple things I wanted to mention, the uh, bigger peppers, like the big bell peppers that we grow, sometimes it takes a long time into the season for them to start really setting a lot of fruit because they actually do pre uh, prefer when the nights start getting a little bit longer and a tiny bit cooler. Uh, it just like spurs them on to produce a whole bunch. So it might just be that you need to plant some other sweet ones like the gypsy or the sweet banana. Some of those that are smaller sweet peppers that will ripen quicker um, and then you'll get some fruit off of those before you're able to um, harvest off of those great big bell peppers. Also, if you live in an area with a really cool season, planting some of those small sweet peppers is a good idea anyway. That way you'll make sure to get some to harvest before your season ends. You might also notice on those big bell peppers that they shed some blooms during the um, hot, hot part of the summer and that's totally normal. Um, they will do that. Hot peppers tend to keep on producing no matter what the weather is like uh, during the summer. They just like roll. They it, I don't know, 100 degrees, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna keep producing peppers. The bell peppers are just a little bit more uh, finicky and it's totally normal. Just be patient, wait for the temperatures to cool just a tiny bit and you'll probably start seeing some fruit. So minus our hot and heavy peppers, which I'll have at least four or five to bring out here. I think we'll have about 30 plus peppers out here this year. It'll be interesting to see how many peppers we get because last year I had, oh, not 30, that's for sure. And not this variety either. I've got quite a nice variety, but I got so many peppers. I'm super excited to see how many we get. In fact, I was just thinking maybe I should buy a scale. It would be really interesting to buy a scale and so I can weigh some of this produce. Um, because oftentimes, like I guess, like we'll harvest so many potatoes and I'll guess based on what I know a 50 pound bag of potatoes looks like, <laughs> how much weight I have there. But it would be really fun to like with tomatoes, which I'm not growing near the amount of tomatoes this year because that was a mistake <laughs> to do. Even giving them away it was a mistake. There, there was just so many out here. Uh, but like with onions and uh, the peppers and all of that, it would be really fun to get a weight and see how much the space yields. All right guys, so that is it for today's video and I'll be adding more peppers here and then I've got a bunch of stuff to direct seed. So the rest of this row, this row right here and then on this side of the artichokes, these three rows, I'm gonna direct seed um, flowers, corn, beans, um, and then over here, hopefully in the next day or two, I'm going to seed all of my vine crops in this space. So melons, uh, cantaloupes, watermelon, and then pumpkins and squash. And real quick, in this area here, I've got two full rows. So two 60 foot rows available for flowers. I think I'm gonna do all my zinnias right in here and then we will be full up. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If you're trying to grow peppers and it's your first time, or if you've just had kind of some inconsistent results, I hope kind of hearing some of those things I've learned throughout the years, the big one is water. I hope it was um, something that you might be able to apply to your own harvest because harvesting your own peppers out of the garden is awesome. Um, the flavor of the bell peppers, I mean, oh, so good. Um, you know what, I don't think I even mentioned too, you wanna make sure you wait till they're fully mature in color too. <laughs> So if you've got, you know, uh, yellows, orange, red, those sorts of things, their vitamin, both their vitamin content and their flavor improve greatly if you wait until they're ripe. So not only will you have a thicker wall, um, but you'll have better flavor and all of that stuff too. So anyway, I think that's all. There's probably stuff I forgot. Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Bye.